There was no master scheme to like become, you know, this major CK accessorizing business of any kind. Um, you know, you can really rack that up to, uh, it, I mean, I've always thought it was very simple. I was doing something that wasn't popular and it became popular. You know, prior to this truck coming up, uh, it was more engine parts, it was more, um, you know, camshafts and headers and carburetors and manifolds and those sorts of things. When that CK truck came out, it really started the restyling industry. I mean, it started everything from running boards to uh, suspension kits to uh, grills again to tonneau covers to soft tonneaus and hard tonneaus and uh, roll pans and body styling. Even side skirt and body kit companies started up because of that. Uh, well, I think that uh, um, I was raised in a family uh, that was focused on, uh, we were uh, uh, automotively inclined, uh, drag racing background. Um, uh, my uncles and, and cousins and my brother growing up had the, the the baddest cars on the road. They, you know, were all you did was wax them and polish them and lower them and make them faster. And and uh, I think uh, I think that I was influenced. I think that my I got a little bit of that DNA, which wasn't about selling parts to make money, but more about how you keep your own stuff. And uh, I think that um, uh, from a I think taste is a is a big role, and I think that you know most consumers don't really know what they want. They think they know what they want, and I think that more than anything, that by producing uh, trucks that that the way that I wanted them, it became their style too. They just didn't know it. Oh, a sport truck would be a lifestyle vehicle. I think that it it, it originally it combined. Uh, um, the looks of a car uh, with the utilitarian aspects of a pickup truck all rolled into one package. And uh, um, if you look at the new vehicles today, you'll see that, that, that they're, that's all they're trying to do. They're trying to keep making vehicles that, that are for everyone, that, that each, every vehicle does 20 different things. And, and I think uh, uh, sport trucks were about uh, making good looking daily drivers that were comfortable to sit in, comfortable to ride in that uh, the tires didn't wear out terribly bad if done properly. Uh, they, you could still tow a vehicle with them with air suspension and other things that we enhanced them with. But I definitely would say that it was probably the true, first true lifestyle vehicle that I remember growing up. You know, everything else was, was meant for something else and you tried to make it into something. I think prior to the 88 Chevy truck, you know, it was kind of a free for all. Guys were trying to do Fords and there was a limited availability of custom parts for Fords. Uh, it was certainly hard to lower them. You know, they didn't have the right suspension to, to be able to do those sorts of things. So it was a lot of work to get them down where they needed to be. Um, there was a little bit of interest in the earlier Chevy trucks, you know, the pre-88s. Um, there's probably more interest in those trucks today than there was back then. Um, uh, the mini truck thing was doing okay. Um, certainly, I think probably up to the CK truck, up to that 88, mini truck was probably the thing to do. The reason the CK truck was popular in my eyes is because it was the most car-like pickup truck that was ever developed. And, and I don't know that anybody seemed to realize that, but that's what was, that's what was so unique about it, is, is it was swoopy and it was soft and it was clean. And uh, you know, if you shaved it just a little tiny bit, it had every good, a good bit of a line as a, as a car did in those days. And because uh, cars really weren't that swoopy then. It was still a, um, a full-size truck. It was sportier. Um, it certainly had the right, um, I always call it the right bones. You know, you can look at any car today and uh, it's got to have, you know, before we can even start to customize it, it's got to have the right bones to it. And, um, you know, um, certain cars have it and certain don't. You know, the, it just looked right. It just looked right. And somebody got the bright idea to lower it. You know, you know I give that credit to Belltech, the, the guys at Belltech. And uh, certainly Boyd Coddington had the kind of the wheel look. and. Um, and it just took off from there. We all decided after that to start jumping on and making accessories. Um, and uh, you know, starting for us was with the mirrors. That, you know, we just saw those big elephant mirrors on it, and and um, saw that uh, a couple things that there was going to be enough volume of that truck. I mean, you know, Chevy trucks just sold a lot of volume. And so, when you're looking to tool something up, you you know, besides the cool factor, you got to say, can I sell enough of these? And uh, we thought that that mirror market was there. And so, we've sold. Uh, tens of thousands of those mirrors.
Calview mirrors uh, from the 80s. And it's the same mold, it's the same part today as it was 25 years ago. Yeah, there was there were some key components. Uh, um, Boyd was obviously on the forefront. His development with uh, uh, GM Truck Center back in the day making custom trucks. They weren't production style trucks, they were very expensive, but they looked, they were awesome, you know. Uh, and then during that point in time, uh, Jim Ewing and Belltech uh, got its legs, had some GM uh, engineering involvement that was able to make some really good true suspension that was right for a vehicle instead of a butcher job that was out there prior to that. And Well, maybe that's not the right word for it, but uh, marginal. Uh, BF Goodrich was the, was the leader in developing sport truck uh, TA tires that had that look and that feel to it. And I think what, you know, what, uh, what our recipe was, was take the best stuff, put it all together and, and create a look that was uh, affordable, but it was a premium look. It was far from the least expensive way to, to, to do, some, do that type of thing to your truck. And uh, find the other bits and pieces that go with it. So it was a matter of putting spare tire relocators and removable uh, um, roll pans and hidden trailer hitches, things that kept the truck useful, uh, uh, but but also in a premium light. And I think if you look at the fact that, you know, we developed the original uh, uh, tonneau cover with snug top, so it was kind of like a trailer top, a set of Boyd wheels, tire suspension, you know, a steering, you know, something like that, and a grill. And I think that that, uh, you know, was a good vibe, and then it was it was relatively easily accessible. I think that would kind of be it. You know, I think at the beginning there was a little suspicion over lowering trucks. Why would you, it was still a truck? You know, why would you why would you lower a truck? A truck is made to haul things, and once you lower it, are you really able to use it as a truck anymore? And so, um, I think they were a little cautious about it at the beginning, and and were you ruining a perfectly good vehicle by customizing it? Uh, and even why would you customize a truck? It was made for working. So uh, I, I think they were a little cautious about it at first, but they once they saw the the uh, um, the crowd grabbing that truck and running with it um, and seeing that it was going to be around hand. You know, I, I can remember when there was a waiting list for them. I mean, you would you know you couldn't just walk into the Chevy dealer and and put your money down and buy that truck. They were going over sticker, and there was a waiting list. And uh, there was even a market for a while where you could buy them and. You know, if your name was on the list, you could buy them and flip them in two or three months and make money on the thing. Um, uh, I think the original Trader truck build, the original Belltech truck build, the original Boyd build, those guys were kind of those were kind of icons. You know, Tim's Tim really probably did the first Trader truck that was an icon. Um, <clears throat> the early Belltech ads were were certainly iconic, um, uh, and Boyd would probably be the three, and then lots of other guys jumped on after that. A lot of guys jumped on after that once they saw that look. I think I started with a pancake jack. I think it was my first jack, you know, then I moved up to a, a four post or a two post or something like that. Then I think I got a second little building. Then I finally moved around the corner and uh, was able to lay out a, a, a true installation center. And uh, um, and then it, it, it blossomed there. But, but um, I was fortunate enough to land, uh, you know, Premium car dealerships too. I think I think that's where we you know we might have been able to differentiate ourselves. I think that uh, my relationship that blossomed with Boyd and the other guys that that we were part of the leading edge uh, Chevy dealerships were also kind of hot rod buddies, kind of street rod guys, and so the mix was kind of like it was there was a fit there, an, an upgraded good stuff. Um, you know, we right away we went out and bought a transporter, so the trucks didn't get any mileage on them. We humped them all there and back, and and I I think that I um, uh, was fortunate to be able to cultivate those bigger volume entities to complement the uh, uh, retail, which had better margin, but but a lot more man hours to deal with the consumer versus the volume that was associated with the with the dealers. At that time, you could mark a truck up another rate ten thousand dollars, which was a lot. You know, considering that truck was fifteen thousand to start with, or eighteen thousand to start with, so, so uh, you know, you were getting another seventy-five percent of the vehicle just in accessories, and and people were buying them. Certainly, it was the favorite truck to go to the river. You know, that was the from California to Arizona driving to the river. That was the truck to have. But that full um, market of being able to 
uh, pick up vehicles, take them to the, you know, from the dealership, uh, do that work. Um, and it, it really spawned actually picking up the vehicle. There were, there were guys prior to that that would go to the dealership and put the accessories on a dealer. But those were kind of mild accessories. Those were more graphics and those sorts of things. When it came to having to do full suspension and tires and wheels and those sorts of things, it, it became where you picked the truck up. But my thought was, if I've got to buy a pair of spindles from Belltech, I want, I, I was looking for every possible distri distribution uh, uh, path that I could get. So it was wholesale parts, wholesale conversions, retail conversions, over-the-counter sales, mail order sales, every way that I could feed that part. So At street scene, we, uh, our CK sales were always great. And, um, and actually when the economy fell off, um, our CKH sales and our S10 sales came back around because guys were hanging flying those trucks and, and um, getting rid of their expensive newer truck and buying those trucks and coming back. So um, I don't know that the market ever fully went away on the CK truck. I don't know that it ever had its normal bell curve of just falling flat. The guys are, parts for those trucks are still good today. So, you, know, you know, we sold a lot of mirrors for those trucks and that truck mirror is still very good today. Very fortunate to be able to stay in the in the uh, um, automotive field. I love it. I've been blessed. Um, you know, there's been uh, 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 you know good times and bad times that come with all that. But I really believe that we're on a a roll for some really good times going forward. And um, I hope to make the most of it, enjoy it. The uh, truck sales are still as sweet as they've ever been. Uh, in fact, it looks like 2013 is going to be a banner year for trucks. Um, I think that spawned the industry. I think that was uh, two things happened. Uh, where when you, you used to buy a truck because you needed a truck, and that bec became you bought a truck because it was a cool vehicle to have, and uh, and that still goes on today a little bit. Um, but it, it started that whole I got to have a truck market. Um, most of them were never used for truck purposes. I just bought an '88 Chevy truck uh, to do with my son, and. Um, uh, I think that's going to come back um, uh, because they're cheap. They can be done, and I think you'll see guys that are in their 40s and 50s go back and buy one because they can afford them again. But I think you're going to see the younger generation buy them again as well because you can you can pick those things up so inexpensive that you're going to see guys doing those things. Um, it, so I, I, I do think you'll see a resurgence on it. I think it's kind of one of those iconic vehicles that um, um, you know guys upgraded to new ones, and I think they're going to go back. Uh, you know the guys. The older guys are looking for, you know, the 55 Chevy truck and the 55 Ford truck were certainly the hot thing to have, and I think that's going to be upgraded now. Those, those guys are getting older, and and uh, but that was their icon vehicle to go have, um, and I think for guys in their 40s and 50s, that Chevy CK truck's going to come back.